Hey, what's up YouTube, I'm Max Patton. You join me today to talk about an interesting development I've made in the world of smart watches for fitness. I've ditched the Apple Watch Ultra. Uh, so this is the Apple Watch Ultra I've been using for training for several months now. I made a video about it. I was really excited. I actually switched off the Garmin Epix, which was one of their top of line smartwatches. What have I switched for? Well, it's this, it's the Garmin Mark. And I happen to think it is a very, very good looking, uh, tool watch as Garmin calls it. Basically that means it's like a luxury-ish watch that happens to be a smart watch. And really it's not a smart watch, really it is, well, it's a fitness tracker, just like their Phoenix lineup or the Epix watch I was actually using before that I sold for the Apple Watch Ultra. So why am I ditching it? These are actually very different watches and that's what I wanna make this video about. So let's talk money because that might've been why you clicked this video. This watch is a lot of money. In fact, this one I'm wearing is $2,200. Why in the world would I spend that much money, especially for something that can't quite match the Apple Watch Ultra on features? Really good question. Well, I will say the Apple Watch Ultra is a very good smartwatch. It's got Siri as a voice assistant and you know, Siri is Siri, but when it comes to being on your wrist, that can be handy for setting timers, calling people, texting, dictating your messages, etc. And you have cellular. So when you're going for a run without your phone, uh, you can basically stream music to headphones. You can get directions on the fly, just on your wrist. It's very useful. However, I found living here where I am in Colorado, doing what I'm doing, which is training for a full Ironman in several months, the Garmin Mark that I'm now wearing is gonna be a much better companion, and here's why. So this expensive watch that costs over twice what the Apple Watch Ultra cost has none of the smart features I've mentioned. All it basically does is it sends notifications from my phone, and of course it tells the time, so it does that as a smart watch. However, it's a Garmin. And I don't make this not as a Garmin fanboy, uh, but just as a realist, because Garmin for athletes, well, it just works a lot better than the Apple Watch Ultra. That's not to say athletes can't use the Apple Watch Ultra. I was using it for several months. I know there's probably plenty of athletes better and more fit than me who use Apple Watches. However, I find the training tools on the Apple Watch Ultra that are built in are just not great. And relying on third-party apps is, something that I don't think works for Apple. And it's something that I've grown frustrated with on the Apple Watch Ultra, because to get maps for my activities, to create courses, to get uh, training information right on my wrist, I need to use apps for all of that. And I'll be honest, that'd be fine if those apps work. They don't work all the time. Part of that is due to platform limitations on Apple's end. Part of it is just due to developers. The reality is that Garmin, for um, as dumb as they are as watches, their watches have this ecosystem that they build into that is incredible. They work with indoor cycling, uh, you know, with outdoor bike computers, indoor spin bikes. They work with all kinds of exercise equipment. They have really good built-in workout tracking modes. They have continental maps for North America and Europe that are really good, uh, and for the rest of the world. I don't think their maps for the rest of the world are quite as good, but they're all downloaded right on my wrist. That's so cool. With the Apple Watch Ultra, if I'm out of cellular dead zone, well, then I'm out, <laughs> I'm kind of SOL. And the Apple Watch Ultra did add a backtracking feature for outdoor activities like hiking or walking or running where you can backtrack to your destination. I've tested this and several, so have several other reviewers. It works, but it's very primitive and sometimes it doesn't even engage at all. So it's not something I would rely on the way it would my Garmin. So let's talk about the Garmin Mark. I'm gonna take it off my wrist so you can see what it looks like. This watch, like the Apple Watch Ultra, is titanium in terms of its case. It's got a sapphire coated lens covering an OLED touchscreen. So already very similar to an Apple Watch Ultra. And I should also mention similar to the Garmin Epix, which is the watch I had before this. So why the hell did I ditch the Epix? Well, I ditched the Epix because I wanted to see what the Apple Watch Ultra was like. And I have to be honest, I really, really did like that Epix but the Apple Watch Ultra tempted me in the smart features. And now I'm tempted again by Garmin. What does this watch do differently? I'll be honest, not a lot. It's basically the Epix. It's the same OLED, nice color touchscreen with decent battery life. There's actually, believe it or not, Garmin watches that get more battery life than this or the Epix because they have more primitive uh, screens that have solar technology, which is really cool, but they're not OLED. They're not the really nice, bright, contrasty screens that we've come to expect on modern devices. So. This is nicer than the Epix for several reasons. One, it has magnetic charging like the Apple Watch Ultra, but is that worth twice the price? Remember, the Epix is like $1,000. This is $2,000 and up. No, it's not. 
Uh, the big thing here is the material. So this watch is constructed really, really well. It actually comes in several varieties. Garmin has constructed somewhat of a cast system with this watch where they have five varieties. They have the Athlete, which is the cheapest one, which just has a silicone strip and it's like a nicer Epix. Then they have this one that I have, the Adventurer, which is, you know, for hikers and expeditioners out here in Colorado, um, and that, which has this nice leather strap. Then they make a, a, a Mariner, I think, which has like this really nice kind of nylon uh, waterproof captain strap. Then they make the Pilot. That's a one with a really nice titanium metal band. Super cool. I think that's the most expensive. Maybe it's called the Aviator. I forget. Uh, and then the, there's the Golfer as well for you know those of you who like golf. And let's be honest, a lot of people getting this watch probably are on the tax bracket to play golf. So I got this because it's something special to me. And I'll be honest, it's a waste of money. It's not something that anyone needs because if you want the touchscreen, the fancy fitness features, the Garmin Epix has all of the same features, just slightly less fancy charging. It doesn't come in a metal case. It's half the price. Uh, the Garmin Forerunner 955 is cheaper still than the Epix and has all the same fitness features. It just lacks some of the cool navigation features uh, and it lacks a few other things. And then there's the Phoenix if you want the navigation features, but still want that big impressive battery life that the Epix doesn't, and the Mark honestly don't give you. So. Isn't the Mark strange, right? It's not as smart as the Apple Watch. It's not even the best Garmin watch for everything because like I just told you, there's Garmin watches that have better battery life than the Mark. And there's Garmin watches that have fitness features the Mark doesn't, like the Venue 2 Plus that Garmin makes now can do, I believe, uh, AFib detection for you know your heart. This doesn't have the sensors and hardware for that. Isn't it absurd? I don't care because what this is to me is it's a fitness watch that is the best at what it is for fitness, for tracking. It has dual band GPS, just like the Apple Watch Ultra, just like the Epix. Why I'm going back is because I want one watch. And while this watch doesn't give me the smart features the Apple Watch Ultra does, to make a long story short with this video, the reason I spent all this money is because it's special. It makes me feel good, it makes me happy, and ultimately I think that's all that matters. I think all of us in life spend on luxuries, and this for me is a blatant luxury. Maybe for some people buying it, it won't seem like much money at all. Maybe they're targeting a very high income bracket for it. I'm not one of those people. It's a lot of money for me, but I really like it because every day I'm training, every day I'm using structured workouts on this through training peaks, using the integrations, using Garmin's built-in maps. All of these things are big value adds to me. Yes, like I said in this video, I could get those with a Forerunner. I could get those with a Garmin Epix, but I get all those in a watch that looks, I think, just incredible. Especially, I really like this leather silicone strap that Adventure comes with because it's silicone on the bottom, so it's nice and comfortable on your wrist. You can sweat with it, but then you get this cool leather backing on this outside. You get this really high quality titanium alloy material it's made of. You get this incredible domed sapphire lens. So just a very high-end experience, and it's just a nice-ass watch. Watch. I can wear this uh, dressed up. I can wear it while I'm working out. It's my one watch at the moment. So Apple Watch Ultra, I think I'll be keeping for a little bit just to make some comparison videos. Let me know which kind of content you guys want to see on that. But I wanted to make this update video to talk about the distinctions between these two watches and why in the world someone would spend so much money for a smartwatch. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Max Patton and I'll see you next time.